الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه لبيت يوم التبعة سنة أجمعين قال الله تبارك وتعالى اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ولا قبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى عز وجل شانه have given us this beautiful day of Jumat al-Mubarak and this blessed month of Rajab to come together to do the Salat al-Jumah I recite the ayah from Surah Alaq to this topic is about Miras, the inheritance Ilm al-Fara'id. It is one of the very important and yet very uh, much to be known, especially in this today's time and world, since men have, people have a lot of wealth and inheritance is very important. I try to search in other, at the end, other faith that is there any rules and laws about inheritance. Um, as being a Muslim, some may say you're biased, but I think this is the best way of inheritance law which Allah has given to the mankind as prescribed in the Quran. Um, I looked into Judaism, understandingly, the firstborn gets the most of the wealth. In the Hinduism, really, there's not much, but apparently he inherits everything. Nobody else gets anything. Christianity that I learned or studied about, that I could not find any particular laws or rules, but they extracted from the Old Testament, from the Jewish tradition and the Christianity, the laws of inheritance. And other people in other places, they just don't have any particular laws. They think whatever they want to do. To going into the background in Middle East, where Quran was revealed, um, they used to inherit everything of father, even the wives, which were not the biological mother of the son, but they were married to the father. So there were a lot of difficulties in understanding and inheritance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Muslim Ummah a law and rule of inheritance, but it came stepwise and gradual. I still need louder? Okay. Louder? Is that better? Alhamdulillah. So, I thought it was close to my mind. No? Okay. So, first when Sahaba Ikram, when they make, immigrated to Madinatul Madawra from Makkah al Mukarramah, according to the hadith, if I had time, inshallah, I'll quote some of them, that Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, when he made the akhwa, the brotherhood between the muhajir and the ansar, the immigrants and the local helpers, which were the people of Medina, the Madinaites, he made the brotherhood among them. So they were inheriting each other's inheritance too, once the one passed. Then another revelation came out, and the revelation was in Surah Al-Baqarah, which was then canceled when the Surah Nisa revelation finally uh, finalized the inheritance rules in Islam. In Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا حَدَرْ أَحْدَكُمْ الْمَوْتَ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَسَنْ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرًا لِلْوَسِيَّةُ لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ حَقًّا عَلَى الْمَتَّقِينَ فَمَنْ بَدَّلَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا سَمِحُوا فَإِنَّمَا إِثْمُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِينَ عَلِيمٌ فَمَنْ خَافَ مِنْ مُوسٍ جَنَفًا أَوْ إِثْمًا فَأَصْلَحَ بَيْنَهُمْ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it has been prescribed for you that one comes to near death time, and whatever taraka means leftover, which is belongs in the good or the wealth, have the wasiyah, will to be given to the children and to the close relative, which is understood in the common way. The right of the people of taqwa. And whoever change it, after he, this person understood that it was not done correctly, then there was no sin upon that person. Indeed, Allah is all hearing and knowledgeable. And somebody who feared that the, the inheritor, the one who, who passed away, have written the unjust uh, will, or he did favor to one person or the other, so then make peace between them and justify that the person means who is the executor of the will. Then Surah Nisa, came in, and this is something very important to understand, the purpose of will to be understood is protection of the weak in the matter of inheritance. When somebody diseased, the people who were weak in the relation are the father, mother, wife, and the children of the deceased. 
because there are brothers, there are families, there are other close relatives who are at times strong and have strength over this matter. So these people, the six relations from the upline, which is called Abwa, or that is called Usul, is the father, grandfather, grandmother, and these are called Usul. And then the downline are the children, and they are son, and then daughter, and the grandson. But if father is alive, the grandfather is not there. He cannot get the will. If the son is alive, these are the two most stronger relation to the deceased person according to the understanding. And all this has been very much mentioned in the Quran. So Surah An-Nisa is the surah in which it is mentioned, this is about the woman. And the will it is being written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one third we can write the will, two third is already be already decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we cannot make change into that. That has to be executed as it is being written. So Zul Faraid, these are the people who are obligated that their portion should be given. Faraid, these are the must to be given in the will left over. And then they are Zul Asab, then these are the people who are close relative. The interesting part is, if a person has a wife and a daughter, no son, she is among Zul Faraid. She get a written, if one daughter get half, if two daughters or more, they get two thirds of the leftover because they are Zul Faraid, this must be given to them. If leftover from that will come to the other family. And then father is supposed to be a very strong, close person to the person because inheritance goes into the male's lineage, not the women's lineage. For the men and women both. The father is the link of the person, or the son or the link, because they are the one who is supposed to have it. And the interesting thing is that the non-Muslim, when they read the Muslim will, and when they see the ayah, يُسِيكُمْ اللَّهُ فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ لِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَذَّنَ أُلْسَلَعِينَ فَإِنْ كُنَّ نِسَاءٌ فَوْقَ فَوْقَ سَنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُنَّ سُلَسٌ مَا تَرَكَ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَا نِسْفٌ وَلِأَبْوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٌ مِنْهُمْ السَّدَسُ مِمَّا تَرَكَ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدٌ فَإِنْ لَمْ it comes to the, the non-Muslim take it on. It. Oh, you have half a share for the girl than the man. But Quran is not talking about half of the men to the daughter. It says double of the daughter to the man. The word is used the woman. So Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah is making a wasiyah. Allah is making a will for your children, for the men. لِذَكْرِ مِثْلُ حَذِّ الْعُنْثَيَيْنِ The double portion of the women. The daughter is the female who is inheriting the father's well, and it says the woman's portion. It doesn't say men's half, it says woman's double. And there's a hikmah behind it. So if there is a one daughter, she will get half of the wealth of the father. This woman is Zul Faraid. And if there are more than uh, one daughter, two or three or four, they all will be partnered in two-thirds of the wealth of the father. This is something very interesting to understand. Now, this is the word which tells us that how the justice is done. It's not because one's gender or not, because it's the importance of the closeness of the relation and the importance of the relation. Then it says, <laughs> For both parents, mother and father, there's one sixth portion already predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, the will will not be distributed, distributed till the person's tadfeen, the cost of the burial is done. Then his loan is paid. Whatever is left from that, it will be taken as a whole and it will be divided into six portion. And the one of the six portion will be given to the father, one will be given to the mother. So now mother, father are equal share. There is no discrimination here. Because both were beneficial to the deceased equally. Because mother gave birth and father was involved in the birth of baby. And then they raised the child together. So the father and mother get equal share. So there is no discrimination. It was a gender discrimination. Then mother should have had a loss of it. So this is what is to be understood. And then if there are daughters, the daughter get half of the wealth and the rest will be going on to the others because father, mother, and wife is supposed to get, wife get one eighth. And if the person has more than one wife, all will share in one eighth. So this is how the justification of this division is. And then it's further it goes, when in Kana, 
له ولد فإن لم يكن له ولد وورثه أبواه فلأمه الثلث. If the person does not have a son of the deceased person, then she will get two th one third. فإن كان له إخوة فلأمه الثلث. If the deceased has a brother from the same parents, mother portion will be slashed down to one six, but the father portion will be increased. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom because the father is ultimately responsible for all of his children. Mother does not have an obligation and the sister, what she get, has no obligation to take care of any matter of the family. After the will has been executed, so means a person's funeral, person's loan, person's will, three things should be taken out. After that, whatever is left from that, once it will be divided into six portion, and then eight portion. So one of the six will be given, not reducing the total amount. Another one six will be given to the father and mother. And then one eighth will be given to the mother. Now whatever is left over will go to the Zul Asab. Because when the son born, the daughter become from Zul Faraid into Zul Asab. Asab means a close relative. So she does not hold that particular position of Zul Faraid because the brother pulls her into that position and they both will be having amount which will be divided from the three. If, suppose if a person has a two daughter and one son, it will be divided into four portion and brother will get two portion and sister will get one portion each. So there are more details. We don't have a time to go into those details. This is a full, uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, one of the most important knowledge will be taken away from my ummah which has been brought to them is the ilm al-fara'id. This is in the book of hadith, it is written as ilm al-fara'id. Every Muslim should know. Since we know how to do the calculation today, education, mathematics, and all these are not impossible, it is revealed in the time when very few sahaba had the calculation and the knowledge. And sahaba got the knowledge from Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and they preserved it and then they shared it. So, this ilm, he said, one of the first ilm will be lifted from my ummah will be the ilm al-fara'id. It is known as ilm al-fara'id. It will be taken away from the ummah. And then further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, abna'akum, uh, abna'akum wa abna'akum la lakum nafa. From your forefathers or father and the sons, you do not know who is close to you. So one should know it is the will of Allah that who in our heart is close to us. Faridatun min Allah, this is the first from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah kana aliman hakima. Indeed, Allah has all the knowledge and Allah has all the wisdom. Lakum nisu ma tarak. Now, if a person, wife dies, the husband inherit 50% of the wife's inheritance. Azwajukum in lam yakun lahum, lahun na walad. If she does not have son, then the husband get 50%. Fa in kana lahun na waladun, falakum rubu. If, he, if the deceased woman have a son, then the husband get only one fourth. Then the son become more a stronger inheritor. If you put all together, the non-Muslims say, oh, it does not match to be the 100%, but it is not 100% that way. First, you take out this portion. Leftover is to be divided among the children. Zul Asab is the children, and there is a whole list of who are Zul Asab. They are also known as the Hawashi. Subhanallah. And she will inherit one quarter if you don't have son. If you have children or son, then she will get only one eighth. And a kalala is another relation which is a very important one to be understood. Kalala is a person who does not have son, grandson, means the downline. He does not have the furor. Furor is the children. Usul are the parents. So if this person does not have children, in the Quran it says, but from the hadith, from the, uh, the, the distribution pattern, is that father and grandfather should not be there also. Because if a person dies and he has no children, but he has brother sisters, and his father is alive, the brother sister will get nothing. The father will take everything. If the mother is there, then she will get one third, the father will get two thirds of it. But if there is a son, the mother's portion will be reduced to one eighth, yet father portion will be five of the six, but the son will still get nothing because father is more stronger and his relations are close to the son. But if he dies, then his children will get it, which will be the next son. 
So this is something to be understood, very, very interesting. And it is also, wasiya and the will is for the living people. In other words, dead people do not get the will. And this wasiya is for the after the death. People often say, give her our share of the will in our lives. That is not allowed. What we give in our life is hadiya or gift or hiba. That has to be equal. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, when you give your, your wealth in your life to your children, the son and daughter will get equal. In subcontinent culture, when the daughter gets married, the father spends money on her wedding and all the decoration and expenses and give her jewelry and all that, which is pretty much common in Muslim culture. And when the father dies, they say, well, you got your share on your wedding. It is not. Her share is after death. But if he gave her things, in the wedding, then she, he also should give to the son equal amount of wealth. This is something to be understood. This has become a culture. Because Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam refused to sign the testimony on one of the Sahabi came in, and it is a hadith, inshallah, if I have time to read, that he came to say, Ya Rasulullah, sign, testify this thing by signature that I'm giving this gift to my son. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam asked, Do you have other children? He said, Yes. He said, Are you giving each one of them this much wealth? He said, No. He said, then I cannot be partner of injustice. He refused to sign. He said, if you give a gift to one child, make sure you give the other person, son or daughter, same amount of time. So in life, the share of the daughter, if we give, is equal to the share of son, or the son's share equal to the daughter. But when person dies, that's where the distribution becomes different. And whatever we give, one third about amount is allowed to be written in the will, which should not be among the zulfaraid because the other child may not feel I have lost my right. So there should be no animosity. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, if you adopt a son, a person should adopt the child. We cannot have a child adoption as a personal. If you adopt the husband's family, if you adopt from husband's family, people who do not have children, they should adopt a daughter. From the wife's family, they should adopt a son. Why? Because they will be mahram. So the wife will not be raising a nephew or grandnephew of the husband who is mahram. But she can have a girl from his family that she can raise with him. And the father will not be able to have relation or marriage possibility with this child of the wife's family because she is mahram for him. So this is something very sensitive and understood by the ulama have divided. So you, a kalala is a person who does not have a usul or the fura for his own. Means no father, no grandfather, no grandmother and no children, no son and grandchildren. So he get the wealth distributed among brothers and sisters. If he has one brother, sister, they both will have equal share. See, now the rule has changed in Kalala. And then, And if they are more than the word, one each, more than one brother, one sister, they have more than like two brothers or three brothers or sisters, then they will all be partnered in one third. Rest of it will go to the other relative in, in uh, Zul, uh, Zul Hawashi or, or, or Asad. Wasiyatu min Allah, wallahu alim al halim. And this is the will from Allah, and Allah has all the knowledge of it. Tilka hudud Allah, these are the limits of Allah. These are the limits and the boundaries of Allah and whoever follow the, jannah, the command of Allah and his messenger will enter into the jannah under the, which the rivers are flowing. And he will be there or that person will be there forever. And this is a great success for the person. And and whoever transgress or breaks the boundaries and limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger will be in the hellfire forever. So the return of this wasiya is a very important thing. And important thing is that all of these relations, the mentioning is from the woman's relation to the inheritance. And this ayah, when you see, uh, this is started in Surah Nisa, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with, Ya so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the Allah be conscious of your Lord who created from men, from him created his spouse, and then from them created multitudes. So the relations are being told. Then the next portion of this further in the Raku, in the further in the in the, in the, in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the daughters and the children or the orphans, who are the weaker part of the community, that their 
wealth and their inheritance should be preserved and kept justly and, and fairly and not to be abused. And then further, the further about description of this, uh, Surah uh, Nisa, the last uh, surah, uh, last ayah, it says, "Yaftu, yastaftu naka qul Allah yafti tukum fi kalalim inna mura halaka laisa lahu waladun walahu akhun walahu akhun falaha nisfu matar." Then further, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described that. Oh, Yen Muhafid, they ask you, they ask you fatwa about the kalala. Say the kalala yafti kum fi kalala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave the fatwa about kalala. Kalala is a single person, means who does not have a for or the usul, the forefathers or father or children or grandchildren. So for then, if a person dies and he has left ukhtun, if he has left a sister, she will get half of it. And if she does not have an inheritance and this does not leave the waris, and if there are more than and if they all more than one sisters or brothers, they will be all partnered in one third. When kanu ikhwatun rajalun nisa falizdikri mithlu haddal unthayin. If they have children, then they will go brother sister. They will now have a two third and one third relation. Same thing as the son and the daughter, two portion for the uh, uh, brother for the one portion sister. Yubin Allahu lakum an tadunu Allahu bi kulli shayin alim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this information to you and command to you so that you may not go astray on this matter and this knowledge. So this inheritance rules came in because uh, the Sahabi, when he was about to die, when this came in, in Bukhari, hadith number 6739, in, it is narrated that before that the, in the wealth, the children used to have the right and the wallet, parents used to have the right. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to Cancel this ayah, that the Surah Baqarah ayah, and then this new ayah came in, and they are now the implemented further ever. So we should be mindful of this, that we can make wealth for one third of our wealth, and then we should not have a loan. Nabi Sallallahu when he was asked to make the Salat al-Janazah for anybody who had a debt on it, he used to say, "Make Salat for your brother until unless one of the companion would come and say, Ya Rasulullah, I will make the debt payment for this person." And Ali radiAllahu Taala anhu, once he promised for another uh, person who died, he said, "I'll pay his uh, his, uh, salat, uh, his debt, his loan." Next, Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met him and asked him, "Did you pay the debt that you promised?" Means he was so much concerned that one should not die in debt alone. Then if somebody promises, he would make the salah because Sahaba could not see that Rasulullah was not making the salah, the janazah for one of the companions. And what is taraka? What is uh, miras? There is much more detail. We are really, it is not something which we can discuss in 15, 20 minutes talk. People have hours and weeks worth of lectures about this. It is obligatory. It is one of the ilmul faraid. Means there are four all type of knowledge is obligatory for every Muslim. Ilm al-Quran is the first one that we learn from the childhood our parents teaches us and that's why we need masajid, we need the community together so that children can be taught, we need ulama to be teaching our children and we have prior, above everybody, it's the parents' responsibility to make sure the children learn the Quran. Ilm al-Quran is the first one. Second important knowledge a person should learn is Ilm al-Fara'id, Ilm al-Mirath. That is the inheritance rules, how a will to be executed and that is to be executed after a person is dead. And there are rules like a non-Muslim would not inherit from a Muslim, whether father or son. But one third, what we write the wasiya, in that we can write for our non-Muslim parents or non-Muslim children. In Islam, you cannot disown a child, regardless how disobedient or good a child is. And you're not supposed to write, it. if somebody writes, my son who's gonna inherit already a portion of wealth, and I'm giving him more in that, when the execution of the will will happen, that will be canceled because this is not approved by Allah or His Messenger. Nabi Alayhi Salatu said, don't do that. That you should make favor for one child over other so that the children will have hatred or animosity towards each other. Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam then he described that that when people used to have a share in everybody's person who used to write whatever he wants, but now the, the ukhwa which he created, the brotherhood among the Mahajir and Ansar was canceled. The other family members or other friends were canceled because it was one tradition among Arabs that if, if, if one said, you are my brother in my life and my death, this was their word. And if he says that, that means when he dies, his children will not get many, anything and his friend who said, or he said that word will get the inheritance. 
and the family was surprised, deprived of it. And many of the tradition was that women will not be given any right. And the brothers and the family and friends will take the men, wealth of the person who deceased. So this will, and which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself first gave Muslim the chance to write and understand. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself took over upon the will matter. And he commanded that this is the will to be executed. We cannot change anything in this will matter. And one of the Sahabi, Jabir bin Abdullah, when he was about to pass away, he said, what should I do about my will? He asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, wait till I get command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then Surah Nisa was revealed. This was the context of revelation of this surah or this ayah from this. And then uh, Kalala, matter was brought in Hadith in Muslim, 4145, you can look into that. So then, Jabir Ta'ala his father was not alive and nor he had a son. So he said, what should I do? And this uh, ayat al-Kalala was revealed to the Quran and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam told them how to do that. One person does not get inheritance in Islamic will. Anybody guess? Who could that be? The prophets of Allah. They don't have any virasah. Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina uh, Abdul, uh, Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib and Sayyidina Fatima. There are different hadiths, I just tell you about that. All together when they came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu about the, the inheritance which was uh, the, uh, the places uh, which was from Khaybar, Fidik, Bagh Fidik or the, the place of Fidik. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Rasulullah said this thing and Ali radiallahu witnessed it. And so as the other Sahaba witnessed it. That Nabi said, we have nothing as our inheritance except the ilm. Ilm is our inheritance. So Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha was displeased from this because she was not aware of this uh, command of Rasulullah sallallahu So as Umm al in Aisha also reminded when the other Ummahat al when she wanted to ask Usman radiallahu anha that we want the well, our share of a wife of Rasulullah, so Umm al in Aisha reminded them that do we not remember Rasulullah sallallahu said we have no verasa, whatever has to be done, we have taken care of it. So the wives did not get it because Ahl al-Bayt, when some people in the Muslim community think that Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhu was not justly treated because her share was not given, so as the daughter of Abu Bakr and Umar did not get any share. So this is to be understood in the context and Sahaba Ikram radiallahu ta'ala alayhi majmain were there. And Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib was the uncle, he would have inherited. So as the Ali ibn Abi Talib could have asked for his wife. And when he became Amir al Mu'mineen, he did not take it. He had a right to take it if, because Ali radiallahu ta'ala has the most knowledge and wisdom to understand this. So this thing to be understood that the Muslim Ummah should be united rather than divided in this matter. So there are many other things to be talked about. It is the share and the, and the portion and the division is so important that we. We should know. If we don't know how we can do the will, and our children at the end will be fighting, and often uh, against certain Muslim culture where I'm from, from Pakistan part, and other things which we heard, I did not see, but often scholars talk about it that when the father dies and the daughter is alive and she is married, so brother often try to ask her, why don't you just don't write it and mother don't write it. This is important not to take their share. If somebody holds their share, it means he's putting fire in his stomach. In the Mi'raj, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, I saw the people who were getting a fire put in their mouth and coming out of their back. Why? Because they were eating the inheritance and the just right of the orphan. The daughter become orphan when the father dies, when the mother dies. So these are very important part to be understood. And there is supposed to be the four division, the kafan, the tfin, and the dain, the qard, the, the loan, and one third of the wasiyah, and then the division of the inheritance, which is to be divided, and there should be a person who's confirmed death, according to the Islamic Sharia death. There have to be importance of how to define death. So there are time is limited, then there should be asbab virasa, yani means a person who is married, a woman who has done katab al-kitab, in Arabic they call katab al-kitab, in Urdu they call nikah, in nikah is dukhul, in Arabic this is different meaning for that we understood. When I said, oh, we have done nikah, the person said, that's not polite word in Arabic culture. So it is said, the katab al-kitab, written nikah anam. Then when they do the paper, Kadabal Kitab, she is still not come to the husband's home, but she has a right for the inheritance. 
And then if a mother is pregnant, till the baby is born, inheritance has been delayed because it's a boy has a different share, the girl has a different share, whether the baby survived. If father and son died in an accident or somehow they died together, it will be tested who died first because if father died first, son will inherit. If the son died first, father will inherit. These are very sensitive issue of very serious delicacy. And there used to be a thing about wala. Wala is the free slave, which is not any form more fun. So there's a pretty much ulma, don't talk about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us and give us the guidance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us guidance and forgive us for any mistake we did. So important thing is we should spend our energy to learn al Fraid and teach our children al Fraid. There are a lot of scholars who are expert in it. Not every alim knows about it. It is very hard. I've been studying for two months to get to this lecture for 15 minutes. It is amazing. But once you understand, you will say, subhanallah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom is about this.